It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal, everybody. I'm host Mike Adams, sitting in the cabin tonight with Dan DeFaw. Before we get started, we want to help you save some money. That's right, folks. Uh, don't forget to use our promo codes to save that money. And let's start off with BuckBaits.com. That's right, the brick-and-mortar store of BuckBaits down at Sterling Heights, Michigan at 15 and Dodge Park. Go over there. If you're on the website, BuckBaits.com, use the promo code UNJ20. That will give you 20% off your order. For those of you who are looking for Easy Cut products, make sure you go to EasyCutProducts.com. And when you're there, use the UNJ promo code UNJ15OFF to save 15% off your order. And let's not forget Lincoln Roan over at PackerMax.com. It's never too early, never too late to think about the PackerMax. Go on over to PackerMax.com, use the promo code UNJ25. That'll give you $25 off your order over at PackerMax Outdoor. For those of you looking for some new firearms and firearm products, make sure you go over to the islandarmory.com. While you're there shopping, use the promo code UNJ10 to save 10% off your order there. If you shot that bird of a lifetime and you want it mounted, don't forget Troublesome Creek Taxidermy. We've had them live on the show. We've talked to them. Uh, you want to get 10% off your order, go to Facebook, go to troublesome.creek.7, find their website. If you go to our website, UNJ, make sure to click on the button to download the form. You get 10% off over there using the code UNJ10. Looking for that game call, whether it be a squirrel, whether it be goose, duck, deer, make sure you go to JPO Game Calls. Look for them at jpogamecalls.com. And while you're there shopping, you use the UNJ10 promo code to save 10% off your order. And Miller Deer Tracking, the man that seems to never sleep during deer season, get 20% off your next deer tracking uh, using the promo code UNJ20. Look for Miller Deer Tracking on Facebook or give him a call over at 810-240-4891. Looking for the hottest new plastics to take on the water, whether it be hard water or soft water, make sure you go over to southernindianabaitco.com. While there, use the UNJ promo code UNJ10 to save 10% off your order. Deer Camp Coffee, folks. We drink it every night on the show. You want to try it? You can go to the brick and mortar store at 15 and Dodge Park at Deer Camp itself or go to DeerCampCoffee.com. Also use our promo code UNJ10. You get 10% off your order. And don't forget, get a bag of the UNJ Medium Roast Blend there as well. All right, Danny. Where's our live view camera look from tonight? Good evening, everybody. It's Wednesday night, our live camera look, looking out over, up in, way up in Marquette, looking out over Lake Superior. It looks like a north wind blowing in where it's 39 degrees. 39. 39, but look at the blue sky. Yeah. And Barely a cloud up there, right? And there's no ice on the water. <laughs> I was waiting for an <laughs> iceberg to come in, right? You know, but there's a great spring shot of the Lake Superior, looking down 41 up there in Marquette. I don't see any snow, so I think it's 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 a safe bet. Uh, we have officially hit spring, at least in the UP up in Marquette. The wind is calm, and we are live starting our... Starting our what? Our podcast. What season? 17th it, season. We started actually back... Oh, first thing I want to know, how much are we paying this guy to rotate this camera? Well, you have to understand. Is that uh, in our budget? It's a few pasties. <laughs> we'll right? do the show tonight. Uh, what Danny's referring to, this is uh, our anniversary date. 16 years ago tonight was our very first podcast. So it's our officially our 17th season, January 1st, but the show's anniversary date is tonight. So That's happy birthday to UNJ, 16 years. 16 years doing UNJ, and there's another birthday in the family. That's right. Uh, my youngest son, Jacob. Uh, some of you may remember him from uh, probably 10 years ago, maybe a few more than that. Uh, he was helping me with the Up North Journal podcast. Tonight is his 24th birthday, so I'm officially old. You are. Don't have to. Three days older than dirt. Right? So. You are I'm older than dirt. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Happy anniversary. Happy birthday, Jacob. Um, man, we got sunshine. Yeah, we do. Last couple of days, it was kind of eh. Yeah, turkey season started here in Michigan. It's going pretty good. You've been out? I have been out. Uh, I've seen a few longbirds. 
but uh, he didn't tell the whole story. No, no, we don't have time for that. <laughs> well, he scared one away. Yeah. <laughs> and our guest is laughing. I, too. I knew where he was, and I, I had to, I had to know my boundaries, and he was staring at me and said. I'm out. Yeah, you, you didn't know where your boundary was, right? Ah, uh, yeah, right. So I had him, though. Yeah. I knew exactly. He was exactly in the area I wanted him to be. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. So cool. congratulations to the people that are have been successful getting birds, yeah. and good luck to the people that have till Friday in the first week. Yeah. And then the people in the second week, good luck to you and yep. the rest of the season. Absolutely. Good luck to you all. So, you ready to get into it tonight? You know what? I think we need to, to go out to go out to Western Michigan to the man, the myth, the legend they call Lincoln Roan. Hey, Lincoln, what's going on tonight? <laughs> hey, how you guys doing? We're doing all right. Uh, I had to give Danny a good ribbon there. You know, uh, we'll right. tell that we'll tell that story <laughs> some other time. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll tell that story. <laughs> you know, I uh, well, <laughs> Lincoln, the sun is shining. Uh, over there on the west side, it's sh- signing on the east side, I think. I yeah, think. it's, it's yeah. Yeah, a little sun out here. Uh, yeah. Welcome to the show. Straight my, <laughs> my side window blinding me, so. <laughs> right. Uh, welcome to the show. It's good to have you on again. Thank uh, you. Good to be here. Happy uh, 16 or 17 year anniversary. It's yeah, yeah. 16 quite an honor. Year. Yeah, 16 uh, years uh, and 17th season we kicked off, so. Crazy. Show number That's 686 cool. tonight. Who would have thunk it? Oh. Wow. Doesn't even seem possible. Right? So, that is awesome. Very yeah. cool. But we get to talk to good people like you. So that's what makes it fun and makes it easy. So. Uh, Very cool. cool. Before we get into the Packer Max and your announcement that you made a couple of weeks ago, uh, right. you've got uh, something you want to say. Uh, a, a good friend from the 5 2 Outdoors. Uh, if you would like to go ahead and say a few words, the show will be dedicated to Dale Wallace tonight. So go ahead. The floor is yours. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I, I really appreciate that. Dale is a, a very good friend of mine and uh, uh, has been very good to us and uh, Packer Max. And, you know, selling his seed in our shop for the last uh, four years has been, you know, been nothing but uh, a great partnership with him. And, um, yeah, I appreciate the show being dedicated to Dale. Uh, he passed away this past um, Monday uh, Monday morning. Uh, I got a phone call from his wife that uh, that he had gone to be with the Lord, and um, it was it was a hard fought battle. He he battled like a champion, and um, he he just he made it a long ways, and and it, it just it just ended up being being more than. Then he could, uh, then he could fight, and I think the the Lord just said, "Okay, we're you know we're taking you home now." And and uh, when that happens, that's it's time to go. So, um, but uh, yeah, he's he's just, just a wonderful man. He would give you the shirt right off his back, and uh, you know, just one example. You know, we, he was at the shop, and we were dropping some seed off, and we were talking, and Jeremiah, my son, he loved giving Jeremiah a hard time, and. Uh, Jeremiah said, you know, hey, we're going to be planting our, our lease down in Van Buren County. And uh, he goes, do you know of anybody, anywhere, you know, any place around there we can run a tractor with a tiller? And he goes, well, I got one. He said, I'll come up and do it for you. You know, and both of us looked at each other like, what? And I said, you don't have to do that. And he's like, no, I'll, I'll come up and do, you know, I'll come up and bring my tractor up. So I got a trailer and all that. So he came up and spent the day with Jeremiah and my son, Justin, and, uh, you know, got their plots done, and and the, I mean, who does that? You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's just that that was just the kind of guy he was, and uh, uh, he's going to be missed. And um, you know, through this whole process, we've um, had many conversations, and um, it became quite obvious. You know, when he did, when they told him he was going to need a heart transplant, that. You know, he wasn't going to be able to do the 5-2 Outdoor Seed Company anymore, um, unfortunately. And so, him and I had a, a pretty, pretty, you know, good conversation about how that, how we're gonna, how we're gonna do this, and how we're gonna move forward with with uh, Best Outdoors acquiring uh, the 5-2 Outdoors business. And so, uh, we we bought 5-2 Outdoors from him. 
and uh, started the kind of the takeover uh, operations and getting equipment moved and um, you know um, it's just been it's been a pretty big undertaking and for Dale to do a lot of the <laughs> a lot of the legwork we'll call it from a hospital bed it was was incredible to get to get me everything I needed you know, to be successful moving forward, um, documents, blends, you know, you name it. And he did that from a hospital bed and while he was on a pump, pumping his heart, you know, and, um, it was really awesome because, uh, last week, uh, we, we had originally, when I talked to him, we, I told him we we're probably going to end up changing the name to, you know, to, it just made sense to put it under the best outdoors umbrella. And, the more I thought about it, um, I just said, you know what? No matter what happens with Dale, I want to keep the name the same. I want to I want to keep that five two, and because there's a story behind that. And so, um, I called him and I said, hey, I just want to let you know that you know I've been giving it some thought, and I said I, I want to keep the five two name in honor of you. And he's just like, <laughs> he was pretty moved by that. So uh, it was pretty cool. And uh, so then a couple of days later, you know, we we're talking about redoing the, the logo and stuff. And I said, I got, uh, you know, my, my, my team put together five or eight logos. And I said, I'd like you to, you know, I want your input on these. And so he picked out, I said, pick out two. And so he picked out logo two and logo six. And he said, but I really like logo two. And so we're going with logo two. <laughs> so is that, is that the one on the current Facebook page? Yes. Yep. That's the that's the new logo that we're going with. That's the one Dale picked out before he passed. So that's the one. <laughs> there you go. So oh. it, it in you know and through this, like I said, it's been very hard to watch a friend you know go through what he's gone through, and he has just been an incredibly strong person through this, fighting for his life. Number one. And keeping a positive attitude, and I mean, he had bad days, you know. There's no question, but he he had seemingly had more good days than bad days. Kept very optimistic, and um, um, I have no doubt that had this pump not broke, that he would still be with us and fighting. And but once that happened, and I just I think it it just took too much to recover after a nine hour surgery, and he just he never woke up. So. Um, went peacefully with his family surrounding him, and um, at the end of the day, that's that's all we could ask for. Absolutely, so. nothing better than being surrounded by family and friends, uh, the yep. ones that care about you the most. But uh, yep. obviously, yep. A, a sad day, but a new beginning for passed on. He'll be remembered in the logo, yep. and yep. Um, you know. We'll talk about that. We'll let that one. We'll let that go for a little bit. We'll talk. Come around back to that. But uh, how yeah. is Packer Max doing? We talked uh, with Robbie Pruitt a little bit. Got some inside mm -hmm. scoop about how the shows went. Talked to you a little bit. Uh, yep. So we are officially into spring planning. And how is Packer Max doing? Oh, it's been it's been another whirlwind. I mean, we we go. It, it seems like it. You know, once once the the new season. Um, you know, we get through January, then all of a sudden we roll right into the show season. And as Robbie would attest to, he does more shows than we do even. But eight weeks straight, uh, we were doing shows. Or I did take a, a vacation, which really didn't turn out to be that much of a vacation, <laughs> as you guys are aware. Um, <laughs> It was a good vacation for me, Lincoln. I don't know how, yeah. why you had a problem down there. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was still a good vacation, but I mean, it, it was a, some, some some challenges along the way. But yeah. uh, no, it was great, you know, to, to be down there. We have friends that live down there too, and so unfortunately, we never got a chance to to hook up while we were both down there at the same time. Yeah, as we tried, but um, but yeah, so so yeah, so you go, you know, you roll right into that busy season and. You come out of show season, you take a deep breath, and then you buy another company and <laughs> add all that to the equation. And then Packer Max is still, you know, we're still trying to 
operate that and get you know dealers dealers fulfilled and and uh thank god for our fulfillment company man it's been they have been rock stars and you know when we we brought them all the equipment from five two and they're going to be doing all of our seed packaging and shipping too and uh i mean days and they were set up and ready to rock and they are they're absolute professionals and 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 we literally wouldn't be as far ahead as we are uh, without them so well it, but, life just uh life will steamroll you if you let it you know yeah yeah it, it takes sure. a lot to run companies and to do what you know you, we do in the outdoors on top of that yep. and yep. hang with family and friends and try yep. to plan vacations uh you know yeah. Well, that's why I'm sitting in the car tonight because we're at my grandkids' house and, you know, hadn't hadn't seen them in a minute. And my wife said, you know, let's go over to the kids' house. I'm like, all right, but I got to do a podcast tonight. And uh, so that's why I'm in the car. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll get to see them here before the end of the show. Maybe they'll come piling in on you. <laughs> yeah, they might. <laughs> that's all right, man. That's cool. That's good stuff. So. Well, you know, it, it is so good to hear that you're off and running for, for another season of, of – Packer maxing and and uh, I think we're coming up on our first break. Yeah, yeah, we can do so, that. So uh, when we come back, we'll continue talking about Packer Max and what we need to do this spring. All right, we're gonna take a quick step outside and we'll be right back after this. All right, folks, any questions out there? Throw them at us in the chat. We'll um, ask Lincoln. There is something here, Lincoln. Uh, Easy Cut says, <laughs> give him a call. Yeah. Scott. Yep. Yep. Yes. He's on my list, man. As a matter of fact, I saw his email today, and I was going to uh, backtrack and get a get a phone call into him. And well, it, it, business happened, customers came in, mm -hmm. phone call. I just he's top of my list, though. I promise you that. There you uh, go. Well, as a matter of fact, I, I did take a second and look around today in the shop, just kind of planning out where I was going to put those. So. So that's half the battle. Well, you got it half done, right? I think now you just get a phone call, right? So Right, right. Business is booming at Best Outdoors. That's why they call it yep. Best Outdoors. It's that's the best. right. It's the best. All right. Here we go. Stand by. Three, two, one. Welcome back. Second segment of the show. Talking with Lincoln Roan of Best Outdoors, Packer Max, and uh, Five Two Outdoors now. So right. everything's growing over on the west side of the state. And speaking of growing, it's growing season. So uh, you know, we talked to you a lot before about you know spring food plots, what to mm -hmm. do, how to do it, all this, that, and the other. Uh, we talked about soil samples, all the kind of stuff that goes along with it. Mm -hmm. If uh, if you had one little trick to try something and not not give away anything secret, but you know, maybe some guy, you know, he's done the same thing every year, every year, you know, and, and everything mm -hmm. works out, but he just, he wants to try something a little different this year. What's one thing that somebody could throw out there uh, to try and maximize what they're doing? Oh, I know it's a, a tough pretty, it's a tough question. It's pretty broad, but well, just general. Because there's a, there's a lot of, so there's a lot of details that go into successful food plotting and growing, a, you know, a viable, a viable food plot. So, um, I'm, I'm going to say, you know, if you've never done any, uh, I mean, just for something new, mm -hmm. like, a, lot, a lot of guys aren't using screen, mm -hmm. uh, they're not utilizing it to, to, you know, they have this big open food plot. Try, um, just putting some perimeter screening around, nothing crazy, um, and then and then do some islands within that food plot. Just take your, you know, if you're tilling, take your tiller and do a one pass, you know, one width, maybe six or eight feet long, and put some, you know, some of this, uh, you know, our screen mix, our magician, mm -hmm. um, you know, and just because deer like structure, they hold tight to cover, and when you have this big open area, they're a whole lot more likely to come into that open area if you have some structure. They're just like bass. Mm -hmm. If you have a tree in the middle of a pond, guess where all the bass are going to be? Right. You know, same thing with deer. If you put if you put a couple of these islands of screen, you know, just just sporadic in there, they're going to concentrate around in and around those, and it'll help. I think it'll help the daytime activity. Mm -hmm. 
um, in your within your food plot. Um, it'll help them feel more at ease, you know, feeding in there, uh, take their, you know, maybe some, some of their alertness level down just a notch. Mm -hmm. And I think that would be, you know, one thing that some guys could try to really up their, up their daytime, uh, food plot usage from, you know, from, uh, from deer, whether it be does, bucks, you know, whatever. Okay. Now, when you do something like that, um, obviously the, one of the, the most important things to do, uh, is to get that soil sample. That magician, that screening mix that has the Egyptian wheat, the sorghum in it, and the Sudan grass. Uh, yep. What pH level should we have that soil to get the most out of it? Well, your optimum pH um, is going to be, you know, I mean, for anything, is going to be around 6.8. That's like premium. 6.8, 6, 7, 6, 8. Uh, that sorghum blend that that magician actually does relatively well in a little bit lower ph as well um the only the only problem when you start talking about planting something in a little lower ph is because you're, you're not going to utilize the, uh, the available nutrients to that plant um like you it keeps it it keep, basically it keeps it bound up in the soil and doesn't let the plants take it up so if you can get that to that, you know, that 6.5 to 6.8 range, I'll say, that's when you're going to be right in the wheelhouse of, of your optimum growing conditions. All right. And when and you talked about creating islands, are you creating islands with that screen, um, that screen mix? Yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, also, does, also, I know, uh, depending on how big your field is, uh, but mm -hmm. but having those islands, it kind of makes the deer move. Also, they just can't stand on the edge, like the bucks coming to the edge of the field and be able to scan the whole entire field and go. Eh, yeah. Make them get out, get out, yeah. work the field. Make them, you know. I've seen several different types of, of islands, as, as uh, Lincoln has called them, but it, it definitely gets them to keep that moving through yeah. the field. Uh, smaller fields, obviously. Uh, you can get a smaller island in, but those bigger fields that, you know, they need to walk, make, make them do some work to get through the field if they're, if it's yeah. getting yeah. close to the right, well, one right? one thing that, that uh, I've, yeah. I've heard guys try before is dirtying an edge. You know, you got, yeah. you know, a junk tree or whatever. Instead of having this perfectly rectangle, mm -hmm. rectangular field, I mean, I know it's going to cause a little more work for the, for the planting for the tractor or whoever's driving and plowing, but, uh, you know, fall, fall a, a tree. And that edge, yep. leave it there to make them work around some edges. Don't have them perfect edges. Yeah, yeah. A soft edge is is a, is a good way to kind of call it. And then, um, you know, you can even it's a lot of a lot of people are using. You know, they'll they'll use like a wall of screen to try to to try to block off the visual line of sight through that great big field. Mm -hmm. Well, do it by doing these islands you can also you're also breaking that line of sight mm -hmm. to, to your point where they actually have to you know come and move through that to, to kind of see i even use one of my main food plots that i hunt you know a, a, a significant amount over is only about a third of an eh, maybe maybe a half of an acre at the most mm -hmm. and i still put a few of those you know a few of those uh, islands in there and I do a perimeter screen, and I don't necessarily need it to be 14 feet tall. I mean, I just need like a, you know, five foot, just enough to, you know, kind of give them that break up that, that visual line. And they feel a lot more comfortable. You don't want to, you don't want to block them in. Don't get me wrong. You don't want to like totally enclose them, but just so you can break up that visual line and it seems to really help well you know like you said especially if, if you're hunting like a, a hardwoods coming into a food plot because uh, you can see a long ways in a hardwoods right or yep. you're going from field to field you know and you, if you're standing in one field you can see a long ways you just want to kind of mm -hmm. make them make them make them work for it yep yep yeah, absolutely yeah sure. yep and then yeah the more the more secure that they feel into that field, the more the more likely they are to come into that during daylight hours. So, and that's what we all want, obviously. Yeah, right. We want them in daylight <laughs> hours, right? We see we've seen right. enough of them on trail cam in the right. dark, right? Yep. Uh, 
So yep. how's, you know, you, you got the screen going, and, and, you know, that's one of the tips, uh, obviously, making sure you got the right pH, uh, getting a, a, a tiller in there or however you get it, uh, get that ground broken up. But uh, should we be getting it into the ground now, or can we hold off? What For, like, the, the Egypt, that sorghum, the Egyptian, does, yep. is that a plant now and get it all season long? No, you want to you want to wait till soil temps are. It's most of your spring plantings, with the exception of clover, uh, you're going to want to wait till soil temps are in the 60s, mid 60s. Um, soybeans, iron clay, cowpeas, sorghums, all that. You know, most of those spring mixes, uh, lab lab. Um, you're going to want you're going to want that soil temp in the 60s, mid 60s. So um, about the time after but, turkey season. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. For sure. You know. So speaking of turkey season, uh, you know, planting planting for birds, we don't we don't really talk about that a lot. Uh, what have you got? People. Yeah. What have you got that works with, with along with that? Maybe to give a small food platform to come through and, and pick bugs. So what we what we this has been our go to for for years, and um, basically what we do now. Um, we plant our cereal grains in our hunting plots in the fall, okay? We use our, our grain bin. We've been running that for about four years now. That's a blend of, you know, cereal rye, wheat, oats, and peas. Mm -hmm. And then we top seed those, all of our hunting plots. We have 11 of them on our property. Um, all of those get top seeded with our, our, um, a blend of our daily meal and our uh, red clover mix, the Frosty. Mm-hmm. So we'll top seed those in the fall, pack it all in. In the fall, that starts to get, you know, the the the, or the, um, the clover starts to set its feet. You do get quite a bit of clover growth also, but it's mainly concentrating on putting that, that root system together. And then what happens in over winter, the, the first thing that pops in the spring is that clover. Okay. And I wish I, if I could do it on my phone, if I was on my computer, I could show you, but... I've gotten so many pictures in the last two weeks, and I'm, I didn't draw uh, for our season, our first season up in New Ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm I'm just waiting for the sixth. But um, I've been getting long beard after long beard after long beard on our property on our big fields in the clover. And they got clover and chicory, and that stuff is greening up like crazy. And they're just in there, they're they're bugging it, they're eating it, they're it's it's they're strutting in it. Um, you know, we, we're getting pictures of, of um, hens and toms, you know, throughout the day. Um, that's a solid, solid mix. And a lot of guys don't, don't, you know, take that in consideration for their turkey hunting is, you know, those clover fields with, you know, they are money for those turkeys in the spring. So maximize your yeah, planning absolutely. efforts. Maximize your planning efforts so you got something for sure. the spring for the birds. Yeah, and the other thing too is, you know, we don't, we don't. I mean, there's still a few of our bigger plots that we do in the, you know, that we plant in summer forage. Mm -hmm. uh, however, all of our interior plots we don't have to plant because they're all in clover. I'll go in, then I'll go in like say in March after the snow's melted. I'll go in, I'll top top seed all those plots with that frosty, and you know, frost seed it. Um, I even did it, took it a step further this year on several of them. I frost seeded and then I called the factor with the packer max mm -hmm. just to make sure that that seed gets down in there. And then that also helps to thicken that up. And I'm telling you, all summer we get, we, we have beautiful clover all summer, um, that we, that we don't even have to plant. I mean, it's already there from the fall before. And then, and then when we go to, we just kind of repeat that process in the fall, we, re, we replant our cereal grains. We lightly till that green manure in, and that's building your soil. Your, you know, it, it really has been solid for us. It's turned up, uh, you know, that New Ago County sand. You know, we've got a very nice loom soil now. A lot of guys comment on the color of our soil. How'd you get that soil in New Ago County? Well, it's from organic material. You got, you so, got, you got, you got, you got to work at it to get it. It just doesn't. It doesn't happen overnight. Very, very rarely will you walk into a a piece of land and go wow look at this dirt 
Mm-hmm. Right. You know, it, it, yep. it's it's perfect. But no, you, you you put like you said, you you put the time in. You 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 added to it. You worked it. And how many years have been have you been planning food plots now? I've been planning on our our property up there probably going on 20, 25 years. So twenty five years of of working that soil. Mm-hmm. It, it, yep. Unless you really foobard it, uh, you should have some really good soil. Mm-hmm. We, we do. We've got we've got top notch, and we've learned a lot. I mean, I I've made every. I, everybody says, "Well, what's your background?" And you know, in uh, I, I, well, I've made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried everything, and I've made a lot of mistakes, and I've learned from my mistakes. And I guess that's what makes me, you know, a successful food plotter. That uh, I've I've. You know, I did a, a consultation up in Cadillac last year, and that guy had some pretty big names in there, and they, they he was not successful at growing plots. I went in there, I gave him a, a plan, I told him, you know, right from, right from, you know, day one, what to do and when to do it and how to do it and what to plant. I put a skid of uh, of, of seed and fertilizer, you know, like the because we use the plot doctor liquid fertilizer, uh, you know, put that all together on a skid sent it to his property and with you know with basically instructions on on what to do and how to do it he's like i need to i need you to dumb it down so i just need to know what bag i need to put on what plot and mm-hmm. so i had you know all set up he did it and and i am it just makes me tickled him and his hunting partner they both killed uh beautiful bucks michigan bucks up in cadillac um i think they shot between the two of them um, they shot three bucks that were over 125 inches, and that's from not even being able to get a food plot to barely grow, to having beautiful lush plots. You know, I mean, I just it's something that we've that we've been doing, and, and you know, we know we know how to get it done. We know what works, and this especially in Michigan. I mean, that's mm-hmm. that's where our you know our mainstay is. But those same principles apply you know, across the country. So. Well, and it go, you know, and that's an, another thing that plays into your resume. You know, when you, when you tell somebody, you know, what, what's your background? <laughs> I've been doing it for 25 years and I, I failed and right. I got right back up on it and I tried this and I tried that. And, you know, makes me want to ask you the question, what's your worst fail ever? Did you like kill a, pl- kill a field? Uh, what, what was, what, in your mind, what was one of those, yeah, we'll be doing that again. Yeah, as an F up. Well, my uncle, my uncle would. Uh, he he's probably laughing up in heaven right now because I absolutely had no business back in the day being on a tractor. I didn't know what what I was doing, how I'd, how to do it, but I thought it's going to be a good idea for me to get on our farm wall and our farm wall M with the three bottom plow behind it and plow this field. And to this day that field is a bumpy mess because I did it right. <laughs> I had furrows. It was, it was a disaster. <laughs> that was my biggest fail. But you were turning some ground, though. <laughs> I was turning ground. But holy crap, it, it, was, it was not pretty. And then we, I took, I dissed, I dissed it and dissed it and dissed it and dissed it, <laughs> dragged it and tried to smooth it out. But to this day, there's still troughs in it. Wow. That's funny. That you know, and every time you go into that field and you trip over at one of those hills, you're like, like, "Yeah, I did that." Yep, it's on me. I do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it, it, you know, like you said, but it's just trial and error. And if, if yep. I'd rather have somebody that, if you really talk to somebody that, you know, they've done it, not well. It should come like this. Well, right. It's like when you go to a, a, a salesman of a, of whatever. And you look at them and go, well, do you own one of these? And they go, look, you can go, no. Uh-huh. Well, then how do you know right. it's good for me, right? Right, right, right. Well, I'm a salesman. Yeah. Right. I think that's the thing when when we bought Packer Max was I had used that product 10 years prior. Right. And I loved it. It's, it was like the missing link to our food plot program. And it took our food plots. We were putting in good food plots, but it took our plots from from good to great, and it, it's just I can't explain to people how big of a difference it makes. And there's a reason farmers have been using call the packers for generations, and that's mm-hmm. because they work. That's that, that huge. 
absolutely true. They, they you know, they've been kind of farmers have been doing it for a long time, and you kind of yep. see the equipment you're using, and here you yep. are, you know, wait a minute. But I tell you what, we're going to come up on to our second break here. And people, if you're listening to the show, uh, don't forget, go over to packermax.com, check out the website. He's got a list of uh, all the Packer Maxes he's got over there. He's got the new 5-2 Outdoors over there as well. And uh, also you can visit them on uh, Facebook as well. So we're going to take a break, and we'll be back for our third segment. We're going to step outside. We'll be right back after this. All right. That's right, Mark Coleman. Six, eight, six. We've done a few. Just like, yeah. just like Lincoln's plowed a few fields, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, not every show is a, 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 a raging success, you know. Sometimes there's a dud in there. <laughs> there's a couple uh, furrows, you know. <laughs> right. Six eighty six. That's pretty impressive, you guys. I, seriously, man, you guys have been bringing good information to the Michigan. Uh, you know, your main. Um, audience is probably is it in michigan i know it's it's stressed yeah. out but yeah you know i mean yeah it's been we've been doing this for a long time man yeah, yeah you know and that's a thing right it, it, it's fun to do it and talk with people and meet people with like you we've we've met and became friends now yep. every time we were on the west side we try to meet up and talk and it, yep. it's the friendships we create it's not just the west side man we were down in gulf shores alabama man we we're hanging we we're hanging on the beach it sounds like you guys had a rip-roaring time one yeah. guy's lost in mississippi <laughs> i had a rip-roaring time i was on the you, beach you, every day you, yeah you were in a hoodie all bundled up that so. was in the morning till it hit 70. uh-huh so. oh i am so i'm just glad i wasn't there the week after that hey you know it's funny you mentioned that because when that happened um a friend of nancy's my girlfriend was down there she was the lady asked her like well, where do we need to go to have you know to hang out and all this that and the other and she said the one place that mike said do not go do not be around the hangout because it's a bunch of kids and it's loud and it's yep. rowdy and you can't even get down yep. the street what happens they have a shooting at, at and she place? was and she was there she was across the street at a store yeah. and had to hide in in the bathroom the hangout is i i sit on the balcony of our condo and listen to music at the hangout it's right i can see it really and if if i had been sitting on my balcony when that dude shot that other dude he'd have been in range like i could have been freaking expanding lead <laughs> oh man i'm like i said i'm just glad i wasn't there right but, yeah, yeah that was like the, that was that was a week later wasn't it yeah Ran right Jeez. down the sidewalk, right past the condo. I could have whacked him when he was going by. Yeah. I tell you what, you know, you, 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 it doesn't. It, it can happen anytime, any place. And nowadays, it just, it. I, I'm sorry, but well, people just don't care. It was a knucklehead no. from two towns over. He was a local. Oh, really? Yeah, he went yeah. up there. So he goes up there packing heat and caused trouble. You know, well, he, he spread out. Yeah, he flat out like tried to execute that dude. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it was hard to watch. Like, man, there was no, no consideration of human life right there whatsoever. He he was flat out trying to kill that kid. Yeah, like I t uh, like I said, there's no no fear, no nothing, no no no, yeah, no bad life whatsoever. No. Right. Well, exactly. that's, that's like we were talking before the show, and we'll kind of expand on this. You know, maybe we'll go down that road a little bit here in this next segment. Uh, yeah. You know, the older you get, there's just certain things in life you got to let go of. Yeah, you know, and figure out what's really important, and right. you know, and, and move along. And yeah, let, let's let's kind of touch on that maybe a little All bit. Right. Let's finish up our, my our thought here, and then we'll go into that. All right, here we go. Stand by. Three, two, one. Welcome back. Third segment of the show. We're sitting here chatting away with uh, with Lincoln Rome from Packer Max and Best Outdoors. New owner of Five Two Outdoors, uh, and we've talked a little bit about that tonight. And uh, you, you wanted to well, expand yeah, on something. Well, you know, when we first met Lincoln back in the back in the years ago, a few years back. Yeah, it's a few years now, right? You know, he had Packer Max. Yeah. And as Packer Max started to gain gain some traction and started running. Full, full bore. He started to, to add attachments, uh, whether it be the crimper or the two ball, two inch ball hitch conversion kit, uh, the wheel kit. Uh, he's got several different um, options for the the Packer Mac 
Attacker Max itself. I can't talk. Um, <laughs> Lincoln, what has been the most uh, or, or the one item that you brought on board that has really taken Packer Max to that next level? Um, I would have to say, I mean, it's been, it's been a, uh, it's been a kind of a building process to, to, for first of all, to get people to understand what a call to Packer is and was and how it works and why it works and all that. So once that was established, we really started taking off and then we added that crimper and we have sold a ton of crimpers, crimpers this year. Um, they they just keep they keep going and that that kind of that no till you know method is is really caught on. Um, it's not for everybody. It's not for every situation, but it does have a lot of merit and and um, guys are definitely embracing that. And that's been a very good addition uh, to the Packer Max line is that crimper. So there you go. There you go. So you know and then. Uh, as we as, as you move down from the crimper now this year just recently announced uh, the acquisition of, of, of five two outdoors so yep. you're gonna put that that's all going to be under the umbrella of, of best outdoors correct yeah yep so best outdoors is the, is our is our company name and then Packer Max is a product of best outdoors it's a registered trademark um, and then um, Five Two Outdoors, which is now going to be Five Two Seed Company, uh, is going to be is also under that umbrella of Best Outdoors. So, um, one thing that we are adding, and I and I, I haven't launched it yet because we have some work to do yet. But we have invested in a new mold this year. We are super excited about it. Um, the mold is done. It's for a six foot Packer Max. It's going to be all one piece, and we get so many questions from, you have the four and the eight, well, do you have anything in between? It's always been, no, I don't. Well, now we do. So um, in about uh, a few days, as a matter of fact, we're going to be getting our first runs of the, off, of that, um, off of that mold, and then we have to put it through our testing process. Um, and then, you know, just ensure that everything's good, the sidewall thickness, the, you know, just everything's good. And then we've got the metal prototypes already ready to go, bolt on as soon as we get those drums. We're going to start dragging it behind, you know, quads and side-by-sides and beating the snot out of it. And assuming everything is a go, we don't have to make any changes, uh, you'll start seeing that six-footer out there in about uh, probably about three to four weeks. So pretty excited about that that's going to be a whole nother i i know that there's going to be a lot of people that have the four footer that are going to buy that six footer so uh, is that going to be a, a strictly pull behind or are you going to be able to add that to the three point system or our plan is to make it a three point as well um and again we have to do the testing uh make sure that you know when we lift that thing up off the ground that we use a high carbon high magnesium stainless steel uh, rod and we want to make sure that that stretch in there. And then we're also, we have we have shallowed the grooves just a tiny bit um, on there, and we're gonna we're gonna do a, a blowing agent in there, so it's gonna stiffen that that drum. And so when we pick it up, we just need to make sure that that's you know that that's gonna be able to withstand that kind of weight. Um, but that's our intention is to have yeah, it will be a three point hitch. Uh, we've got all the, again. We've got all the steel design for it. It's ready to go. We just got to get the drums and and do our testing. So, so we're cutting down time on the field. Yep. So and we're covering we're covering you know a lot of side by sides are over that four foot width, and so guys want that you know those tires covered. Right. And um, it's it's going to be it's going to be a, a I think it's going to it's going to you know it's going to be what that that next bring us again to that next level that mm -hmm. that um that we needed we needed to have a six footer it's been in our back pocket but just um it's a it's a huge investment and you know molds are not cheap and as everybody knows it's a cast aluminum mold i mean the mold is beautiful <laughs> so <laughs> but uh but yeah so we're, we're stoked about that that's going to be out and 
that's going to catapult. So, well, we can't wait to see the unveiling of one so we can promote it here on, on the Up North Journal and yeah. we'll, we'll pass on the information when we see it come from you. Uh, sure. So you, now you've got, uh, you got a, an actual storefront now, right? Yeah. Yep. So people yep. can come over. What, what are some of the things that somebody's going to be able to walk in and purchase from, from the storefront? Yeah, so, so our, 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 our main shop, I call it my shop. I don't know, that's just what I've always called it. Um, it's, it's just north of Grand Rapids in Rockford, right? It's right off 131, half a mile, so easy to get to. Um, you know, we've got our, our full line of 5-2 outdoor seed now, or a 5-2 seed company seed. Um, you know, we've got clovers, brassicas, screening, soil builders, you know, cereal grains. You know, we've got a full line. It's, it's, it's really, and again, it, it's something that we've used and planted every single every single blend that he has or that we have now uh we've we've used and planted and it's excellent seed um so you're gonna be able to buy the seed you can buy a packer max of any you know our packaging facility is not very far away it's in kent city so we can you know if we don't have something we can you know run over and grab it um we've got habitat hooks from nick nation uh nation's creations habitat hooks we've got i just got a load of the um earth blind water holes mm -hmm. the, the large water holes those things are so cool um they're textured and they're tapered so critters can crawl out you know we get pictures of hawks and and owls and eagles and deer and coyotes and bears everything uses that thing um so we've got a we got a load of those today. As a matter of fact, I just unloaded them. Um, we have some sprayers now. Um, we have some chemical. We got uh, glyphosate, 2,4-D. We're gonna have clethodome, and we also carry the full line of Plot Doctor uh, liquid fertilizers and limes. And um, that stuff is there's a lot of science that goes into that, and way more than we can get into on the show, but. It's that stuff has been that stuff is money. It's so much easier spraying a gallon of you, you mix a gallon of lime into a, a 25 gallon sprayer and spread it on a on an acre. And it's the equivalent of putting a thousand pounds of lime down. Okay. Uh, and so it's it's calcium carbonate and there's 15 pounds of pure calcium carb, uh, carbonate in a in a ton of ag lime and there's these gallons are 15 pounds of pure calcium carbonate so by your it's already broken down you're you're just a direct shot versus having it in this all this you know all in the line so that stuff has been that stuff has been great and uh so yeah i don't just sold a pack of nukes <laughs> <laughs> right you know you, you as you're you're over there off m57 or 14 mile road as you're traveling yep. down, you're in the red building. Look for the trailer out front, and you can Back. stop by and say hi to Lincoln Roan at his shop, as he likes to call it. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah, we pretty much have everything you would need for, you know, and then now we have access to, uh, we have a, a local distributor that we're working with that we can get discs and tillers and, and brush hogs and, you know, you name it. So pretty, pretty, uh, you know, it's pretty pretty solid. You know, you can stop, and, and we're going to have, you know, pretty much anything you need to, to put in a, a, a high-quality food plot. We have soil tests that we, you, you know, we can give you the, the, the paperwork. You do the soil. You grab the soil, send it in. They send us a, a report. You get a report, and then we make the recommendations on what you need for plot doctor um, fertilizers and limes based off your soil test. We have all the information right at our fingers. We tell you you need a gallon of this, gallon of that, half gallon of that. So, set it all up, one stop shop. Yep. There yep. you go. So, so there you have it, folks. Packer Max Five Two Outdoors. Make sure you get over and visit them at their website at Packer Max Outdoors, or visit them at the web uh, Facebook Packer Max or Five Two Outdoors, all on Facebook. And, uh, you know, we've been talking about uh, Packer Max. Before the show, we were talking about life. And we were yeah. talking about, you know, unfortunately, what you had to go through watching your friend Dale. Uh, unfortunately, it, it went downhill. And, and then, which yep. led us to, the, to this rabbit hole 
of right. taking a break, and we'll come back and talk about it. All right, let's do that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we got to get our last break in. So we're going to take a quick step outside. We'll come back. We're going we're gonna to get a little bit philosophical on you. So we'll be right back after this. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> I knew where you were going, man. We, we've done a few of these shows before. I knew exactly where you were going. It's only 668 or 86. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, we're, we're like an old married couple. <laughs> yeah. What was that called? Liquid? Uh, so Plot Doctors, Liquid, they still have the foliar fertilizer, which you would put, you can use it either on the, fo- on the you know, on the foliage, or you can spray it right on the dirt after you plant. What was the liquid lime? That's liquid, it's just Plot Doctor liquid lime. Got and then there's you. liquid calcium. Liquid calcium. Yep, and then we also they have a liquid uh, nitrogen. And it's all carbon-based. All the fertilizer's carbon-based. Um, 100% available to the plant versus uh, synthetic fertilizers. And you're, you're, this, this, it's hard to... I was watching... I've, I've heard Brad Harper's delivery a couple of different times but it's chileated nutrients um so they're they're, the nutrients are protected whereas in synthetic fertilizers they're not and that's why the plant they already know this the plant can't take it all up so a lot of it is locked in the soil and so that's why magnesium levels are so high phosphorus levels are so high because it's locked in the soil so with the plot doctor those are protected and buffered and so it's all available to that plant it's all carbon based and so it's actually good for your soil and your micronutrients and your organisms and um it's there's a lot of science behind it and brad the guy is he's he's so he's so in tune with all that stuff and it's it's really it's really cool to listen to him but so, uh, but well, i do know okay. he uses blueberries and the blueberries are really good <laughs> <laughs> so one gallon equals how much a thousand pounds of lime really wow yep. so much easier to deal with yeah so much. right yep. wow it's amazing what science has done uh in in just some of the stuff that we deal with every day now it it, it blows my mind how far that people have taken things and Making yes. it uh, more user friendly, number one, but more environmental fr- environmentally friendly, mm-hmm. uh, but also friendly to your pocketbook, so you're not wasting yeah. chemical on the ground. I mean, it's being yep. utilized by what you intend it for. Right. Yeah. And you're, you know, there's, yeah, there, and there's, the, the, there's so much information out there now. It's, but like this deer, and I don't want to, I, I won't say any any product names, but it comes in a mm-hmm. big white jug, and they advertise it that it changes your ph well it doesn't change your ph uh it's calcium chloride not calcium carbonate and there's a big difference okay <laughs> so, okay cal- calcium carbonate is what you want okay you ready so. yep all right here we go stand by three two one welcome back last segment of the show for those of you listening on the podcast you missed a good little science lesson here during the commercial break so you need to watch the live show. Yeah, you folks, you know, you, you, it's good that you're listening to us on the podcast, but if you want a little bit more of information, you got to go back to the live Facebook feed or wait for a few days. I'll post this show on YouTube. When you're over there, make sure you subscribe. And you can see what we talked about with the man, the myth, the legend, Lincoln Roan, in the break. We had science class. We did? Sometimes it's funny stuff. Not right? That tonight, was tonight we went to school. So. Right. But uh, not, you gotta go. We gotta listen to Brad. I'm just repeating what Brad said. Well, there you go. Still, but you know, it, it's it's good knowledge. I mean, you know, yeah. It, uh, it, it I kind of spin it a little bit. Kind of leads us into what we want to talk about. You know, uh, yeah. the way things are, are rolling. You know, in life and technology changing and things change so fast and situations change and you know, you're you're roughly the same age as Danny and I. We're all in that same category. You know, we're we're, we're looking down the road and we're looking at retirement and you know uh, you just had a good friend who passed uh, probably way too soon 
But it, I mean, it, it gets to the point where, you know, you look at things and what we spend our time on uh, in the outdoors, you know, you, you were very active, very, very active in uh, a lot of the things that was pushing deer hunting. Uh, you know, I was active a lot in learning more about deer uh, and food plots and, and the outdoors and everything. And you get to a point in life where you're just like, man, you know, it's catching up to you. And it's like, where do I want to focus my energy now? What do I want to do with the time I have left? You know, and, you know, expand on that a little bit about, you know, where you're at. Well, as you guys know, I've spent a lot of time, like you said, in trying to get, you know, regulation changes here in Michigan and have gotten virtually nowhere. You know, we built this uh, Facebook platform, Michigan Deer Hunters, let them go and let them grow. I, you know, I founded that group. Um, we are now sitting somewhere around 44,000 members and those are all people that are like-minded and passing mm -hmm. young, letting them go and letting them grow to one extent or another. And so I think that, you know, through the process of working with the DNR and, and trying to get these things implemented, it's just, I mean, literally has, has taken all of it out of me. Mm -hmm. Like I... I literally have just given up. Like, I started to re-engage uh, here, you know, not too long ago, and then all of a sudden we have this thing happen with my friend Dale, and it just it makes you it makes you just recalibrate and just look at life. Like, okay, and I've kind of had this mentality for the last couple of years, um, and, I, and I don't know what changed, but all of a sudden. You know, Packer Max has been doing really well. You know, it, it has afforded me a lot of, we are, we are incredibly blessed. And I thank the Lord for that every day. Um, but, you know, it's afforded me the, the opportunity to do some things that that I want to do now while I can, not wait until I retire and then try to, you know, battle my way through with a bad knee or a bad back or, you know, you never know what's going to happen as Dale found out. Right. And so it just it just kind of refocuses you on what's important and you know at the end of the day you know our property in Nuego, i've had to re-examine what our goals are there like okay we're never going to shoot 150 160 in bu inch bucks there it is not going to happen in right. my lifetime mm -hmm. so you know what let's take this property and we had an easter egg hunt up there over easter i mean we had kid my wife said i never thought i'd see the day when you'd let 11 grandkids run through your food <laughs> oh and i'm like hey i would have been freaking out seven years ago but you know what that's not what it's about anymore what it's going to be about is taking the kids up there my grandkids and and i last year you guys probably saw the pictures of me with my granddaughter yep. you know harvest that dough with my granddaughter she you know that was that's priceless the year before that I, my my grandson one of my grandsons shot his first his first buck, you know, a, a spike horn. Who cares? Mm -hmm. It was a, you know, you, you couldn't have smacked a smile off that kid's face. And yeah. just to be able to be in the blind with him and experience that is irreplaceable. Mm -hmm. And, you know, through this whole thing, I have met some incredible, incredible people. You guys, uh, you know, Mark Coleman, uh, Robbie Pruitt. Robbie Pruitt, that dude, I'm telling you, there's not a better human being on the planet. Like, you know, I explained to him, you know, he works for Animal King. He's been a huge advocate for Packer Max. I explained to him, you know, this whole seed purchase mm -hmm. company. You know, he could have turned his back and said, you know what? I, I can't support you anymore. You're going to be a competitor. No. You know what he did? He understands. I'm helping a friend. And, you know, I'm carrying on this person's legacy. And... And technically, yeah, we're going to be, we, you know, we'll be both be in the seed business. But you know what? At the end of the day, there's plenty to go around. Right. And I respect him so much for for the way he handled that. Because I just tried to be honest with him. Like, hey, you know, you're this is where we're at. And, um, you know, you just, I've met lifelong friends through this whole thing. And I guess at the end of the day, deer are just deer. They don't, it doesn't amount to a hill of beans yes it's our passion that's what we do it's we will always try and strive to do better we want to take care of the earth we want to take care of our herd you know we want to feed our herd um we want to you know have have everything come full circle and harvest and eat our our harvest but 
it's no longer important uh, or as important to you know what we what we end up harvesting. If I want to go shoot big deer, I can go to I can I have the lease in Ohio now. I have the lease in Illinois. I go to Saskatchewan. I'm going to Iowa this year. I can shoot my big deer out there. Yeah. But the property, the family property, is now going to be just that. It's mm-hmm. going to be for getting kids in the outdoors, spending time with my family in the outdoors. Um, you know, that's what it's going to be about. I had the opportunity to go to this hunt to heal property, which is very close to my, to my, uh, our property in Nuevo. Mm-hmm. And it is an amazing place and they are doing some great things. And to be able to, to have somebody think enough of me to bring me into that program to go, okay, Hey, we want your help with our food plot program. It meant the world to me. And I'm going to be able to, to help these people that are, that are handicapped in one way or another or struggling with something to get out there and enjoy God's creation and, you know, help make them just, you know, share some of the, some of the abundance that I've been blessed with. Um, so that's, you know, I, I guess that's, it's just kind of been re refocused, reevaluating what's important. And, um, and I'm not saying, you know, shooting big deer isn't important because <laughs> I still love, <laughs> I love big bucks, but, but it's just, it's, it, it's just different when you start thinking about it it's when you take the pressure off of yourself and reapply it to you know okay it's okay if i don't shoot a big one this year i shot three big ones last year so i'm good for a minute you know like now you know now it's going to be about getting my you know hunting with my sons down in ohio and you know a family on the property and grandkids and so anyway no no no, that that i think sense i think as we've gotten older and you look back as to how where you've been, where you're going, I think all hunters, well, pretty much all hunters that I know go through that. Mm-hmm. They get to a point where like, okay, I've done this. Now it's time for me to either pass it on to, to the kids or mm-hmm. uh, somebody new. But you're more, you know, you're, you're, hey, let's talk about it. What, you know, what? How, how can I help you become a better person, hunter, out it's perspective, there, right? It's and all it, perspective. It's right? not necessarily about me anymore, right? Yeah. Well, well we uh, see a lot of that, uh, you know, across the board. I won't say the hunting industry. I won't say the outdoor industry, but we see it all across the board, even landowners. It, uh, you know, at some point, you got to let go of all the angst. <laughs> you, know, yep. you, you know, my deer or... You know, oh, you shot a small one or whatever. It's it's it like you said, like at the end of the day, it's a deer, and you know, be happy with what you got. And yep. uh, life's just too short to sit and argue over things. You know, like 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 he talked about that that spike, right? Yeah. And that smile on that youngster's face, yeah. like he said, yep. you couldn't smack it off. Of him. Right. If it would have been a doe, probably been the same. Yep. It, it doesn't matter. Right, and I'm not saying I'm not gonna keep tease a 45 year old man if he shoots a spike horn. I'll probably still tease him, but <laughs> yeah, but you know, and, and that's all good fun too. You know, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, that's part. That's part of camp. Yeah, it's it, just you know, just like I said, it's and especially when you watch something, you know, what happened with Dale and just the progression. Yeah. Of having to, you know, witness that and experience that, and um, you know, talking to him almost. Hey, for I just sold another pack of mugs. Nice. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> register noise. <laughs> What's that? Can you hear that cash register noise on my phone? Or I, I keep hearing it's ching, ching, right? Ching. <laughs> <laughs> but you know it, exactly. It's perspective and how we pass yeah. that along. You can't take it with us. So, right. you know, and, and look, look what you're doing for Dale, right? You're carrying on his legacy in the yep. logo. You know, That's so. Me incredibly important to me to, to see to it that that his legacy has continued through that and and you know um you know his funeral is friday or is, is friday and and um you know i'm just i'm so thankful that we were able to get everything that we needed um and from him and and he's and i, I and i don't want to say he he suspected i think he i think at the end of the day you know we're as we talked you know we both were are realists and said hey you know there's a there's there's a high probability that you may not come out of the hospital i mean you know and I, both of us hated talking like that but at the end of the day 
that's the way it was. And he said, I want to, I want to write this up. I want to get this written up so that there's something that you have something, you know, saying that you bought the company. And I'm mm-hmm. like, all right, all right, or are buying the company. And, you know, and that was still not important to me at that point, you know, but he, he, you know, he said, you know, we got to get something down on paper. So, um, yeah. Right. It's, uh, so, it, yeah, well, you know, people's, it's, it's that perspective. And, you know, things happen in life that make you take that three steps back and look forward go, am I doing it right? Do I want to be going down this path? Yeah. Well, right. you know, in, in, in the last three years, my life's changed a lot. And, uh, yep. and I and my direction on things have changed. I've stepped away from a lot, and I'm going to continue to step away from a few more things uh, mm-hmm. because it's just it's it's getting to be time for me to be able to enjoy, like you said, you mm-hmm. know, the grandkids doing things with the grandkids and, and looking forward to you know whatever years I got left instead of sitting there arguing about something. It's just it's just not worth it, you know. Exactly. So, so yeah like it's like danny going to you know going to africa this year and i'm going next year Mm -hmm. and i never would have thought in a million years of that hey i think i'm gonna go to africa you know and yeah Mm -hmm. i'm going to africa (laughs) well it it literally was like that it's like i'm now i don't have any you know inkling to go and all of a sudden it's like he signed his name on a dotted line yeah okay i'm going (laughs) yep so but you know and that's how it works and you know we you know we talked about even the alaska the trip in alaska right yep. that's yep. A, hey <laughs> mm-hmm. i'm going to talk to you more about that by the way uh yep. but anyways um so um being perspective we got some questions we need to ask him he's been on before but we can ask him like we did robbie because he played the show show circuit Ah, okay. I see where you're going with that. Yeah. Because we got to get his perspective now. We got it from Robbie. Okay. Right? Right on. So, you know. I'm good with that. Right? So. Do I need to put my seatbelt on? (laughs) No. No. No, he's not going to throw you under the bus. (laughs) No, this is all good stuff. Maybe under a cash register. I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you were at, I think you said eight weeks in a row, show season, going nonstop here uh, iowa wisconsin illinois wherever you might have been um what was if you did what was one of the things in any of the shows that you saw maybe it was an item maybe you saw saw something happen that you just kind of looked at and went hum good or bad hum hmm he just went, hmm. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> a lot of things that shows I'm, so I'm a really good salesman, but I'm also a really good at being sold. All right. What did you, what did you get sold? <laughs> so I've been on the spotting scope and Robbie at the Indiana show said, Hey, check out my new spotting scope. And I went, huh. And it's this sweet, compact, hawk spotting scope. And I'm looking at it, and I'm just like, where'd you get this? And he's like, oh, right down over there. I'll boost right down there. So he goes, he's got one left. So I went right over there, and I bought it. (laughs) And then when you walked away, the guy went, boop, and here's the last one I got now. (laughs) And and that spot. Is so cool and it's just super compact. I mean, I it's I literally have it in my center console in my truck and um, it's there. You know, I just I'd be cruising on the road the other day and I just oh check out the deer back there. I got the little window thing and I'm looking at them and uh, I don't know that was my that was I don't know why that stands out. Um, the other thing is uh, so you you see all these products and these blinds and this all this stuff. But one thing that stood out to me, and I'm not just saying this because Scott is maybe listening, but that extension saw that they have, the Easy Cut has, Mm -hmm. extension saw is money. And I'm going to own one, and I'll probably buy them, you know, and I'll probably, I'll go shopping in my shop one day and and buy one from my shop. (laughs) (laughs) But 
<laughs> but they, those, those are, that's one other product that I, that I stepped back and went, hmm, yeah, that is sweet. That extension saw will cut your finger off. Yeah, I did it live here in the studio one night during a podcast. I, I had the blade, and I went to turn to him, and he stuck his hand out at the same time, and I oh, laid it open. I was bleeding like beans. It was, it was awesome. So, okay, so that's your hum moment. Now, yep. well, you spend all day at these shows, and mm -hmm. you got to eat. Now, are you one to have something from the, sh the show, food? Or you no. go out? So, number one, when you do that many shows, I, and I'm already fat enough, I don't need any fat. <laughs> and you you can eat, It's they have nothing but garbage. And I, I am gluten-free. I am I'm allergic to gluten. And so there's almost nothing that I can eat at a show. And so I bring food in. We bring a cooler in. We bring drinks and a cooler and sandwiches. My son and I would make wraps the night before. But those wraps are really convenient for shows because you can you can set it down, you know, take it out of the bag, eat some of it. If you get somebody walks up, you can set the thing down and you know go back to it. Um, so we we take wraps with us, and that's what we eat at our shows. Except for now, Robbie turned me on to this. the The Wisconsin show does not allow you to bring in uh, food and beverage. At the at the uh, at the Wisconsin Dell Show in the Kalahari Resort, okay. They want you to buy Kalahari stuff. Well, Robbie's done it a few years. I didn't know any better, but he brings a cooler in when he sets up and puts it under his table. I don't want to call him out if they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> Great idea. Like, so so that's what we started doing, and. At the Kalahari, we actually stayed, we, our, our room, we stayed at the resort, and our room was literally about a one-minute walk to our booth, so it was perfect, so I could go back to the room and grab a sandwich or a drink, but... <laughs> nice! Um, and meanwhile, yeah. next year, Robbie's going to get stopped at the door, right? <laughs> you <laughs> two guys! <laughs> you could put some stuff in our refrigerator in our room if you wanted to, but... Oh. But, uh, but, yeah, that's... Okay! That's, and it'll, it'll get you, and it's, it's, uh, it's expensive, and... You you know you spend a lot of money on these shows you really do and and um, man if you were if you were eating at the show and spending seven bucks on a hamburger and a in a, or a hot dog and a bag of chips yeah. or ten bucks um, I, I paid twelve dollars for a walking taco at the Kalahari. <laughs> wow. Well, yep. Scott from Music Cat said the same thing. He said wraps are wheat also. So and he also yeah. says, "All right, Lincoln, let's go." So <laughs> well, I, I, they make. Gluten-free wraps. I get gluten-free wraps. Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, so, when you're out traveling all these states, best spot you stopped at for food? Um, so like on any like like during show season. You're, you're yeah, you're, you're, yeah, yeah. You're traveling to Iowa. You're traveling to Wisconsin, or or you're at the show, or, and you're with Robbie, and he says, "Well, let's go eat over here." I wish I could remember the name of it, but um, the Robbie and I and Lo, uh, Floyd, um, what's his? Um, gosh, I can't remember the name of the restaurant. We went, we went there, and that was probably one of the best. Robbie could tell you what it was because he's eaten there before. But um, dang it, what was the name of that place? Steak place. It was a, it was a, they had pizza, they had steak, they had, I mean, they had everything. All right. That okay. Was a cool. I can't remember the name of it though. I'm sorry. Well, I, I, was, I tipped him off to a restaurant down in Gulf Shores. Did you go to the Cobalt down yeah. in Orange Beach? Yep. What'd you yep. think of that? It's a great place. So we, we go to the Cobalt, Cobalt, the uh, Gulf across the street. Yep. Um, where all those blue containers are. <laughs> that's, yep. That's a great place. Um. Gosh, there was, um, there's three or four down there that are really, really good that we that we eat at regularly. Yeah. I did get weight while I was down there, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to do, man. <laughs> it's easy to do. Are you going back next year? So, uh, yes. We're going to go back to Gulf Shores. I don't know. We might go a week earlier or a week later. Uh, just either trying to get away from that spring break just a little bit 
Um, but then in Gulf Shores, you still run into a little, you can run into, as you are aware, the colder weather. So, yes, but you had that last year. You had, I think you, you ran in, was it snowing when it, it snowed the day we left? Yeah, it was, it was not nice. So, <laughs> it was not nice. I, I got it all nice and warm, you know, and then Lincoln comes into town and it snows. But no, this year wasn't bad. I mean, we had a couple of chilly mornings, but it wasn't real bad. Yeah. We're going a week yeah. later this year. We're going to go that last week of March. All right, next year. Yeah, we were we were uh, we were on the back end the week before we went down. It was in the 80s. We got there and it was in the 50s. I was sitting on the beach. It was sunny in 57, which was still better than Michigan. <laughs> but, you know, but really, <laughs> right? It's not what you expect, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Drive nine hours, I freaking miss our turn, end up in Mississippi, got to go back. I get out, it's just 57 degrees. Michigan to Gulf Shores, Alabama via Mississippi. Right. Yeah, but don't have Atlanta. Atlanta. Oh, Atlanta. You got to, yeah. Atlanta. He zigzagged it. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, you know what, Lincoln? I uh, want to thank you for coming on. Uh, we've had a great hour plus talking with you, as we always do. Um, but... Just remind everybody, get on over to PackerMax.com. Check out the PackerMax, what he's got over there. Uh, I'm sure we're going to have Lincoln on again. Go over to Facebook. Check out his Facebook page there. And now, also, 5-2 Outdoors. Yep. There you Thank go. you for as I, It's always a pleasure. And you know, it, and again, I just I want to reiterate, you know, the, the, what you guys, the good that you guys have done for for the outdoor industry, outdoors. You guys are just salt of the earth people, and I've appreciated your friendship all along. And and um, you know, just keep up the good work. Congratulations on 17 seasons. Uh, it's an honor for me to be on the show on the anniversary day. So that's pretty cool. Yep. Well, I tell you what, how about? We, we make that post that you made a post of a little bit ago. We make a, w if you invite Robbie and I and Mike with our campers over to, to wherever you're thinking of, we, we have a, an October rendezvous over there or something. And we can do that for sure. What could for go sure. wrong with that, right? Yeah, what, right. I, it's, that's what I'm just thinking. What could go wrong with that? Right. <laughs> so definitely have some fun. Thanks for dedicating the show to Dale, too. That means a lot to me. Hey, absolutely. Glad, glad to do that. It's the least we can do, you know. So, uh, you Good know, man. prayers and shout out to, the, to the, their family, man. It's uh, it's yeah. never easy. It's never easy. No. So, so. No. so, thank you. Well, well that's well, going to well. do it for us tonight. Hang, yeah. on, hang on afterwards. Uh, Lincoln will chat real quick after we wrap here. But uh, for those of you who are listening on the podcast, as always, we'd like if you're listening over on iTunes, make sure you give us a review. Uh, that will help the people like Lincoln who support us and helps them in return as well. Uh, and if you're listening here on the live stream, uh, make sure you smash that like button, the follow, uh, give us a, a, a share of the show as well. You know, do the same for all of Lincoln's uh, social media pages as well. So next week, Danny, we got something kind of special. It's, this is going to actually showcase your trip am i right yeah we're going to be talking with dave wilkins of drop time outdoor adventures i'm going to be taking a little 10-day trip out of the country that means i get a two-week break folks <coughs> you're gonna miss me i got two weeks there, actually seriously though there's gonna be two weeks that we're not gonna do a podcast unless i conjure up something to, uh, between the, that time that he comes back he's gonna be out of the country for for a few days right so so stay tuned we'll talk all about it next week what's going to happen and we'll see we'll see <laughs> right. okay yeah. all right about it man i am that's going to be sweet and then when lincoln goes on his trip we're going to have him back on talk about his experience okay. there you go right. so yep. all right folks that's going to do it for us this week make sure you tune in next wednesday night 7 30 right here on facebook that'll do it for us this week we'll see y'all next week take care <laughs>